Boro Tutorial 101 by Studio JPEG. Hi, this is JP LaForce from Studio JPEG. In this video, we're going to be examining the scene modes which are available on most modern cameras. And it doesn't matter if you have a DSLR like this T3i here, or even one of the point and shoot cameras, most of them do have these scene modes. And basically, you can see here there's different icons. So if you look in the manual of your camera, you'll see that most manuals do explain all of these modes pretty decently. And each camera will have different modes. Uh, the T3i doesn't have too many of them. Uh, some other cameras, especially the point and shoots, normally have more. The more professional of a camera you get, normally the less scene modes you have. Because the more you understand about photography, the less you're going to be reaching for those modes. But there's still a good place to start with if you're looking to go outside of automatic mode and you want to do some fancier stuff. So the first mode we're going to see is the portrait mode. And basically in this mode it's designed to take portraits of people. And basically the camera sets a whole bunch of things that uh, we're going to be getting into more details in the future. Such as shutter speed and aperture and sometimes it can even change the uh, white balances and the color settings and a whole bunch of things behind the scenes. But basically the portrait mode is a great mode to use if you're taking portraits of people, of pets, or anything of that nature. The next one which is on most cameras is the landscape mode. And if you look on the T3i screen it actually does give a quick description of each one. So this one, for example, it blurs the background so that the subjects stand out. For those more advanced in photography, you know that has to do with the aperture, which we'll get into into a further video. Whereas the landscape mode gives uh, does the opposite. The landscape wants all of your image to be in focus, so it uses a different aperture, which again we'll see in a further video. The close-up mode is a little bit different from the other ones in that it doesn't turn your lens into a macro lens magically. So you can't take a picture closer than you normally could in any other mode. But it does optimize some of the settings so that if you are taking pictures of flowers or insects or anything that you're going to be close up on, it is going to optimize some things so they pop out better. And again, I'm guessing they're playing with the aperture because on a close-up, uh, the closer you get, then the shallower the depth of field. The next mode is the sports mode, which basically uses a very fast shutter speed, which is going to stop the motion. So if you have kids playing around or if you have people doing sports or whatever reason you have for people moving pretty quickly, then the sports mode is really good. Uh, also works if you're taking photos of airplanes or uh, bicycles, motorcycles, automobiles, really anything like that. Sports mode is a great mode for that. So anytime something is going quickly, uh, even a bird would be a great example for that. So all the life, wildlife photography is a great example of things you can do in the sports mode. And finally, the night portrait mode. Uh, it's used, it recommends to use a tripod and again in this case it's going to be playing with the shutter speed. So with a tripod you can take a picture that takes longer to take and it's still going to be steady because of the tripod. And this works great if whatever you're taking a picture of is not moving a lot. Now the sad part about these scene modes is that by the time you understand all the mechanics that are going on behind them chances are that you will not really be needing them too much. But in the future videos of the Photo Tutorial 101 series, I'll be going through what makes an exposure, so the shutter speed, aperture, ISO. And we're also going to be seeing how they affect the image artistically. So again, how you can use them to blur the background, for example, or how you can use it to get everything sharp, uh, if you want to stop motion, all those sorts of things once you understand aperture, ISO, and shutter speed and how they all integrate together, it really opens up a new world of photography. 
So please subscribe to the channel and you'll be updated when these videos come out. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the box below. If you liked the video, please click like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.